whoa. <laughs> That's quite a crowd here. Uh, I, uh, I'm glad to see that the sun came out for my sister from the Penobscot Nation. And I appreciate the, uh, uh, her letting it stay out for me to speak. <laughs> All right, I'll speak louder. I, I don't know how we do it in both directions at once. A century ago, the National Women's Party went to Washington, D.C. to protest a government that would not recognize their human rights. Let me be clear that contrary to some beliefs, I was not there. It is, in my view, the same struggle that is going on today. At that time, women could not yet vote. Reporters treated them with condensation, con condensation, <laughs> condescension. The only difference is that today, the legitimate press treats us with respect. But the new government, led by he who shall remain nameless, has yet, he has yet to show us that they will treat us with respect and not once again with condescension. We demand respect. Yes. We demand control of our own bodies. Yes. We demand safety in our homes. Yes. We demand safety on the streets. And we demand safety on the job. We demand an end to harassment, to discrimination, to violence, and to rape. We believe most decent Mainers will support those rights as well. We refuse to return to the days of forced birthing no compassionate welfare system, and no access to health care. We will not be silenced. We will use our voices, our compassion, and our political skills to prevent the destruction of the legacy of our sisters, our mothers, and their mothers, and we ourselves fought so hard to secure. Women united will never be defeated. 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 In 1917, police were arresting women for protesting and throwing them into workhouses. In 2017, we have a different set of punishments to fear. Women will feel the impact of upcoming policies, threats, along with many others, many of whom you've heard from today. Our lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered brothers and sisters, people with disabilities, immigrants and refugees, especially in the Muslim community, will suffer greatly as well. I thought long and hard about what I could possibly say as a white woman that would be authentic and come from my heart. Whatever I said, say must inspire all of you to be hopeful enough to continue working for women's progress. I do have hope still for a future where someday women will achieve equality. Unfortunately, I no longer believe I will live long enough to see that day come to pass. <clears throat> but I am totally, I am totally committed to helping my generation to get closer and for your generation to get there.
I came of age in the resurgence of the women's movement in the United States, high school in the early 60s, and graduating from Brandeis University in 1966. I marched in the streets for the passage of the Equal Rights Amendment, which would have put American women into the Constitution. I cried when it failed. I have been depressed of late, as many of you may have been since the recent presidential election of He Who Shall Remain Nameless. Yeah! <laughs> Voldemort. Voldemort, I thought about using that. <laughs> But I have risen once again, and this month, I began my new career as a member of Maine's House of Representatives. And better still, this week, I introduced an amendment to the Maine Constitution to ensure equal rights for women. My, co my lead co-sponsor, Eloise Vitelli, is also here today. We lost that battle in 1985 at the ballot box, but it's time for all of us here to rise again and demand equal rights. I truly believe we must have hope and confidence and hold each other up, sisters and brothers in this struggle. We must be the wind beneath each other's wings. Today, I send you forth with the, with the following charge. We must celebrate women's accomplishments. We must support each other emotionally and financially. We must invest in the girls that will follow in our footsteps. Yes. We must run for office in even greater numbers. We must raise sons and grandsons who respect and value women as equals. And finally, we must support women who have the courage to step forward, stand up, and stick their necks out as leaders. And most of all, don't be quiet. no longer cert uh, certain that I will live long enough to see a woman president of these United States <clears throat> unless Michelle Obama decides after all to run but I promise you I will spend the rest of my life working to lift the female half of the human race to full equality and the male half to full understanding I ask you to join me on this journey thank you